Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again to bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. We're teaching right now on the faith life. What is the faith life? Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ephesians 2, verse 8 says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And we can go on and on and on with different scriptures that talk about faith. Faith is the life of the believer. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring forth this message in a way that each and every person could understand. I pray that you would give revelation right now. Speak through me, Father. Speak into the hearts of each and every person that is listening to this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can open your Bible to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans, the 10th chapter. And remember, we said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we have seen that there is faith that comes from the outside in to people that are receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. For the first time, they hear the word, or second time, third time. Many times people hear the salvation message several times, and then finally it, they, they make a decision. And when they make the decision, the Lord Jesus Christ becomes their Lord and their Savior, and they are born again. And that's what we see here in Romans 10, in verse 9 and 10. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We said that word saved there is not only in reference to being born again, but it's all of the benefits that go along with being born again. One of those benefits is physical healing in our bodies. Another benefit is to be able to put our hand to something and to prosper. You know, the, the Bible says that God supplies all of our needs according to his riches in glory. The glory of God is on the inside of us, and this is what gives us the ability to prosper. You see in the Old Testament, when the glory of God was put out in Obed-Edom's home, even though Obed-Edom was was not uh, a Jew, that, that home was put there, uh, or that Ark of the Covenant was put into his home to, to be a hiding place for the Ark of the Covenant. And it was the Ark of the Covenant that contained the glory of God. And the Bible says that his whole house was blessed because the Ark was on the inside of his house. Well, anyway, the glory of God is within us when we are born again. All these things are imparted into us when we're born again. And that's what this word save means, talking about deliverance. Thank God you're no longer on your way to hell. You're on your way to heaven. It's talking about safety. And thank God we have God's angels that watch over us to protect us and keep us in all of our ways. Jesus prophesied in Luke 17 and verse 21 that the kingdom of God would be within us. The love of God is placed within us. All of these things are placed on the inside of us when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, when we are saved. And so it says in verse 9, again, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Notice verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. God's word is called the word of faith. Why is God's word called the word of faith? Because when God spoke it out, it came out of belief. It is truth. God believes what he says comes to pass. He doesn't question it. He doesn't have to think twice about it automatically when he says it. What he says he believes comes to pass. And, and you know, the Bible says that the word of God is a two-edged sword in Hebrews 6 and verse 12. The two-edged sword actually in the Hebrew means a two-voiced sword. 
Well, when the word of God came out of God, that was the first voice. And then God's word is meant to get into your heart, into your spirit, and for your mouth to be the second voice. When God spoke it out, he believed it. It comes to pass. When God's word gets into your heart, you believe it, you speak it, it comes to pass. This is the way it works. And this is exactly what verse 9 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now notice verse 11. For the scripture saith that whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, and the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now notice here in verse 14. Now here's the point. Faith comes, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In order for us to be born again, someone came into our life and they shared the gospel with us. They preached. They 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 shared the, the word of faith with us. And we made a decision to believe that word that someone ministered to us and we were born again. But not only is this faith comes from the outside to the unbeliever in order for them to be born again, it's the same way with you and I. Once we are born again and we saw have seen this in previous teachings, Teaching God's faith is put in us. You have God's faith in you. You don't have a faith problem in your spirit. Your spirit is perfect. Your spirit contains all of the nature of God. Your spirit contains all of his character, all of his ability. God operates through faith and God put his faith in you to be activated in your life. Well, how does that faith? You see, for us, faith doesn't come from the outside in. The word comes from the outside in. But what happens for you and I, we receive God's word. God's word comes into us and then faith comes up. It comes up out of our spirit. That's why Jesus talked about drinking from the well of water within us. All of the ability of God is on the inside of us. You are a perfect, recreated human spirit. God lives on the inside of you. You're not lacking anything in the spirit. What's in you in the spirit simply needs to come forth into your soul and out into your natural life. Now, look at this. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. It's for... Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? To obey the gospel is to believe the gospel. To believe the gospel is to act upon the, the gospel. Who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I like this in verse 18. How, but I say, have they not heard? Yeah, yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth. Wow, this is a prophetic word. God's word going to all the earth. God gives everybody the opportunity to be born again. Every person the opportunity to receive his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as Savior and to receive this all-inclusive package of salvation where all of the blessing of God is. And, and, you know, when, when I read this verse, I, I, this is exactly, this, this, this pricks my heart because this is uh, what God has placed on the inside of our, of our ministry to do, and that's to go to nations all over the world, and that's exactly what we are doing. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went to all the earth. Thank God for the Internet where we can go to all the world, to many nations all over the world. Thank God for all of you that are out there sharing the gospel on a regular basis. Thank God for all this technology that we have, television and and. Uh, and CDs and, and MP3 players and all these things. This is God's uh, word 
through all this technology that he has given this generation to go to all the world. Isn't that powerful? Wow. Have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. That ought to be our vision. Now, so faith comes by hearing. Go with me to Mark, the 11th chapter. And this is another one of those foundational verses, one of those foundational teachings that we have in the Bible pertaining to the faith life. In Mark, the 11th chapter, we have an example. This literally happened. This is not just a story. This is literally something that happened through the perfect example of faith, the perfect example of a person walking in this faith. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything Jesus said came to pass. Every place that Jesus went was the perfect will of God for him to go. Everything that Jesus did was God working through him. Everything that Jesus said, God was speaking through him. You understand, Jesus was completely yielded to the will of of his father to the flow of the Holy Ghost. Jesus lived a perfect faith life. Wow. Now, in Mark the 11th chapter, I want you to notice what it says in verse 12. It says that on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Yes, even Jesus' body got hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the times of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now, isn't that interesting? Jesus here speaks to a fig tree. Notice. And, and first of all, it says uh, in verse 12, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. So Jesus was hungry. He saw a fig tree afar off, and, and it was um, if, if, the, if the fig tree had leaves on it, it was supposed to be producing fruit at this time. It says, And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. He was excited, you know, well, you know, I'm hungry, and, and here's a nice fig tree, and, and I'll be able to eat. And he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Or actually, it, it's talking about how that this tree was not producing figs at this time. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. What does it say? Jesus answered. Jesus answered. There was something coming out of this fig tree. You know, and this is the way the enemy works. The devil will use negative things in this world to speak things. You know, the tree didn't talk, but there was a thought that came into Jesus. It was a negative thought, probably a thought, well, Jesus, you're not going to eat today. You know, ha ha, Jesus, you came, you thought there was food on this tree to provide for your hunger and you're not going to eat today. I don't know. There was some kind of negative thought that was coming to him because of this situation. And what did Jesus do? He spoke. He answered. And that's the key right now to live in this life in victory when the negative thoughts come where we learn not to receive those thoughts but to speak something to speak against those thoughts to speak the word of God instead of allowing those thoughts to have a place in our life that's why Jesus talked in another place where he said you take the thought when you say it you know, if Jesus would have looked at the disciples and said, well, I guess we're not going to eat today because after all, there's no fig on this tree and I don't know what we're going to do and complain, complain and all these different things, then that's what would have came to pass. But instead of that, Jesus spoke, he answered that tree, he spoke against those negative thoughts and he cursed that tree. And here is the way that faith works. All right, let's continue on to verse 20. In verse 20, it says, and in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Notice, 
when Jesus spoke to that tree, they didn't see immediate results. And sometimes that happens. You speak things, you say things, and you don't see immediately results. But because you spoke the word out in faith, and in this situation, Jesus cursed the tree. There are times that in faith we curse things. When I pray for people that are sick, that have cancer in their body and to body, and tumors and things like that. I don't speak the blessing to that cancer. I don't speak the blessing to those uh, cancer cells on the in per, on the inside of that person. I curse them. I command them to die in Jesus' name. And because I believe what I say and I confess it, it comes to pass. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? It says, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering and said unto them, have faith in God or have the faith of God. Here it is right here. Have the faith of God. This is how the faith of God that's on the inside of every single believer works. And so when we go back to Romans 10 and verse 17, where it says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then in, in the verse uh, Hebrews 10 and and. Um, Verse 8, where it says that it's the word of faith that we preach. What do we find out through those verses? We find out that faith comes. Faith is going to come forth in your life as you hear God's word. So, you know, if you need a physical healing in your body, what is it that you're going to need to hear the word on? You're going to need to hear the word on healing. And God's word is loaded with healing scriptures. And as you hear those scriptures and hear those scriptures and hear those scriptures, and maybe it's the same one, maybe it's a few, and you know, maybe, and, and I mean, really, there's, there's, there's no excuse for this generation of believers not to be loaded with the word of God. There's so much good teaching out there that you can hear people that will teach you about healing people that will teach you about how to prosper Te people that will teach you about how to sow your finances and then God multiply your finances people that teach you about love and all these different things. We have so much that God has given this generation. But if you have an area in your life that is, uh, you know, it's God's will for that area to change. You know that it's God's will for something to come to pass in your life, but it isn't yet coming to pass. Then it, then it's important. And, and you don't, you're not, you know, you, there's some doubt in there. It's important that you hear the word of God about that. If you need healing, focus on healing. If you need to increase in finances, focus on finances. If you're having a problem with unforgiveness toward another brother or sister in the Lord or somebody out there in the world, it's important that you hear things about love. As you hear God's word, it brings his faith forth and then you can walk in that promise. Well, that's all the time we have today. Listen again as we continue on with this series, The Faith Life. This is Mark Irvin. Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again today to bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. Father, I just pray in Jesus' name, speak through me. Give revelation through me. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is the teacher who leads and guides us into all truth. And Holy Spirit, right now, you're going to give us revelation. You're going to give us our Father's word. And Father, that's what I pray, that you do that through your Holy Spirit on the inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. You can open your Bible to Mark, the 11th chapter. We're teaching right now a series on the faith life, and we're looking at Jesus as our perfect example. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. We can do the same things that Jesus did. We can have the same type of life here in the earth that Jesus had. This ability is within us. And that's what we can see in the Gospels. Not only can you see Jesus going forth and doing these works, but you can also see yourself going forth and God working through you as sons and daughters of God on this earth doing the same thing that Jesus did. And the way that we can do that is through faith, by faith, speaking faith, actions of faith. And here in Mark, the 11th chapter, we have a, a landmark or a foundational teaching. You know, this is another passage of scripture 
that uh, you can build all these other faith scriptures upon. You know, there are, there are those center verses in the Bible, and from those center verses, you build everything else upon. And this is one of those center teachings that Jesus gave us. Jesus taught a lot to the people that he was with at that time to prepare them for who they would become in him, in Christ. And, and we have an example of Jesus using this God faith that was in him as a son of God in the earth. We have an example here in Mark, the 11th chapter. And we see that actually this faith was used not to bless, but to curse. Jesus was hungry one day. He saw a tree in the distance. This tree looked good. It had leaves on it. It looked like a nice tree to get fruit from. At that time, this tree should have been producing fruit. But when he got there, there wasn't any fruit on the tree. And then something spoke to him. Because the Bible says that Jesus answered the tree. He answered. Now, trees don't talk. But you understand the devil is the god of this world. And there are times that the devil will use negative situations to speak negative thoughts into us. And Jesus would not allow that thought to take root in his soul. And the thought may have been, you're not going to eat today. Ha ha, you came, you thought there was fruit here. There's no fruit. Now you're going to go through the rest of the day hungry looking for your next meal. I don't know. That's what I think. That's my opinion. The Bible doesn't say that that happened, but it does say that Jesus cursed the tree. That's what it does say. And it does say that he answered this tree. And, and so, and you and I know that trees don't talk, but there were thoughts coming into him that were contrary to God's will. And that's why Jesus spoke what he said. He said, no man eats fruit from this tree from this day forward. He cursed. He spoke death to this tree. Well, the next day, Peter with Jesus and the disciples are walking by. And, and here's another thing. When Jesus spoke, they didn't see instant results. And sometimes that happens. You speak something and you don't see instant results. But everything Jesus said came to pass. And this is the way you can function as well. That everything you say can come to pass. That's the way God wants you to function where you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, or you speak it out your mouth. That's how you got born again. You believed in your heart, and you confessed Jesus as the Lord of your life. And what happened? You got born again. God's eternal life was imparted into you. This is the way it works. This is the way faith works. Now, notice in verse 20. It says in verse 20, And in the morning, as they passed by they Jesus and his disciples they were walking by the same place where this tree was it says they saw the fig tree you know apparently they they were walking by this tree and then you know they stopped and they saw this same tree that Jesus had gone to to get food from the day before and what happened it was dried up from the roots so notice all the way down to the life source the roots the unseen heart and maybe when Jesus spoke and said no man eats from you this day forward maybe at the at instantly there was results in those roots that you couldn't see I don't know but I know from the time that he spoke until the next day something began to work in this tree to cause this tree to die and that is so important you know and Maybe you're somebody that has a symptom in your body. Maybe there's cancer cells in your body or some type of disease in your body. And maybe you've said something and you haven't seen instant results or the manifestations of the healing has not come. Well, here is an example for you. You speak it. And when you speak it, it 
the power of God, the life of God begins to work on that situation. That's so, so important. And just because you don't see instant results after you said it or after faith was released does not mean that it's not going to come to pass, does not mean that it won't manifest, doesn't mean when you pray and ask for something that God has not heard you. You believe what you say, what you pray comes to pass and it will come to pass that's what we find out in these passages of scripture notice and in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and peter calling to remembrance saith unto him you know like it was a shock to jesus everything jesus said came to pass and jesus knew it you know, that's why Jesus didn't go around talking the way some Christians go around talking. I'm scared to death. I'm sick and tired. You know, uh, how are you doing? Oh, not too bad. I, I, those are things that should never come out of our mouth. We are sons and daughters of God that have God's faith in us. Hallelujah. It says here, and in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him master Jesus teacher behold look at this Jesus look what happened to this tree like it was a great shock to Jesus no Jesus knew it would happen that's probably why he took them by this tree the next day so they could see the results hey this stuff works praise God you didn't see it this day but this stuff works don't ever forget that just because you don't see instant manifestation when you speak it doesn't mean it will not come to pass you believe what you say. Hallelujah. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. When they walked by that tree, it was completely dead. Withered away means they didn't, it didn't just not have leaves on it. You know, maybe those leaves were all shriveled up. I don't know. But literally every part of that tree was dead 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 it was it was dry it was as dead as any kind of dead tree <laughs> that you've ever seen it was dead praise god and that's the way we need to see the sickness the virus the cancer cells the bacteria that shouldn't be there all those things things that are contrary to God's will, the, the, the things that are sucking your finances out that should not be stealing from you, the, the uh, unforgiveness root that is in your heart that maybe hasn't come out yet where you don't feel like you have forgiven that person, the emotions are, are, are not gone. You understand, you see those things gone. You see yourself completely free from all those things in your life that are not God's will for your life. Praise God. You answer that with God's word. You answer that with faith. You go against. You curse that. Praise God. You have that ability. Yeah, it's scriptural sometimes for Christians to curse. And this is one of those examples where you curse. <laughs> you go against. In Jesus' name, I curse that cancer and I command you to die. I command you to leave that person's body. I curse that financial lack and, and what's sucking the finances out of that person. And I command in Jesus' name uh, that situation to die. And I speak the blessing over that person that needs healing in their body. By the stripes of Jesus, they're healed. I speak over their finances and I command them to be released in the name of Jesus and that ideas come forth in Jesus name uh, for that business and those finances I speak over that person that they are free from that root of unforgiveness that the word of God and the love of God is working and instead of those negative thoughts they're being able to see those people in the right way and the way that that, that God sees them <clears throat> and I just see that person free from those 
difficult things that are in their heart and I see them free that those emotions can feel good again. Hallelujah. Can you see this is this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what Jesus did. He cursed it to the roots and he released and and there and we can release the blessing. We can release the blessing. And that principle also is found in James where James talks about out of the mouth uh, proceeds blessing and cursing. He says these things ought not to be. Of course, he's talking about uh, Christians that are constantly making negative confessions about their life and 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 you know what the devil's doing and all these kind of things and I'm scared and I'm sick and and all that stuff that shouldn't come out of our mouths as Christians. We want to curse the things that are contrary to God's will and speak the blessing forth. I walk in health. I walk in prosperity. I walk in the love of God. I have divine appointments on a regular basis. Angels are out there protecting me and on and on. This is the way it works. I'm going to continue to show you that here in verse 22. I don't know. I'm about ready to preach today. Praise God. Yeah, it's scriptural. <laughs> <laughs> it's scriptural for Christians to curse. <laughs> no, I didn't say to say bad words. That's not what I'm saying. This is where it's scriptural to curse, to go against the things that are coming into your life that are contrary, the negative thoughts that come because of negative situations, just like this tree. God's not telling you that negative situations won't come into your life. I mean, Jesus had storms. That came into his life. He was sleeping. He just got up and rebuked the storm. He cursed. Jesus had people that were demon possessed in his services. He spoke against those things. Jesus had, you know, religious people that came that uh, were only in his services to criticize and go against him. Right in the middle of it, Jesus had people healed. People that wanted to be healed, <laughs> he said, which is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven, take up your bed and walk. So, so you understand, this is how it works. You can be in this dark world full of light, walking in the light of God, the promises of God come to pass, manifesting in your life as you live this life of faith. Now, notice verse 22. It says, and Jesus answering saith unto them, this is right after they say, wow, master, the tree that you cursed, it's gone. Jesus answering, saith unto him, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. Wow. Have the God kind of faith is actually the way that this should have been translated in the Greek. And some of you have that in the footnotes of your Bible, even in the German Bible. It's in the footnote. Uh, of one of the German Bibles. It says, And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have the God kind of faith. Jesus said, This is the way it operates. He's telling them, Have. This is one of those preparational teachings. One of the things that you, that, that you need to realize about the teachings that Jesus gave in the Gospels is that these teachings were teachings to prepare man for the time of coming out of the Old Testament way of living and living a New Testament way. Man lived by his senses in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, praise God, we live out of the Spirit. God lives in us. Our spirit is perfect. It's complete. And when you and I were born again, God put his faith in us. We saw that in previous teachings that we've already given in this series. God's faith is in you. Even Paul said in Galatians 2 and verse 2, 20 he said i've been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ lives in me and he said in the life that i live i live by by i live by so important so important there are some versions that say uh, that i live uh, by the faith by faith in but that's not the way that that verse should have been translated the king james says i live by the faith of the Son of God. You have the same faith in you that Jesus had in him. You have the same ability to have the same kind of life manifesting here in this earth that Jesus had. You're a son. You're a daughter of God. God lives in you. His faith is in you to do the same things that he did. Oh, man, I see that our time has come to an end. We got some great things that we'll continue to get into uh, next week, as, as we teach from Mark, the 11th chapter about casting out the doubt, it's going to be a powerful, powerful week. And so anyway, I want to invite you to join us. We will be on live on our Internet 
channel, our live stream channel, on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, German time. And you can go on our website, the front page, and all the other time zones are mentioned on the front page. And we'll enjoy having you with us. Uh, in our in our Sunday service and and we're actually teaching uh, with English and German translation so you can call your friends up if there's German speaking and they can join us that Sunday o'clock Sunday morning at 10 o'clock of course all those services are also uh, on video on demand afterward that, that you can watch on our live stream channel so anyway have a wonderful wonderful weekend and I look forward to being with you again Monday as we continue on with this series the God kind of faith or the faith life. This is Mark Irvin. Faith, hope, and love, greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. Hello, this is Mark Irvin bringing you a message of faith, hope, and love each Monday through Friday through this internet broadcast. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hope is the anchor of your soul. And here's the greatest one of the three. You have a Father God who really loves you and cares for you. Yes, that's right. You were created to be loved by God. So listen each Monday through Friday. Tell your friends. Get your Bible. Relax and enjoy the broadcast. This is Mark Irvin. Well, praise God. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again to bring you another message of faith, hope, and love and today we are continuing on with our series the faith life father i just pray in jesus name that you would bring forth this message in a way that each and every person could understand i pray that you would give us revelation lord i thank you for a brand new day a brand new week father a brand new week father to go forward with the plan and the purpose that you have for our lives. In Jesus' name, you working through us. You doing, Father, what you want to do through us. In this day, this week, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You can open your Bible to Mark, the 11th chapter. We're teaching on the faith life. The faith life. And here we have one of those foundational teachings of Jesus for God's faith being in us and an example of God's faith in us working Jesus said that the works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these shall you do because I go to the father well Jesus is our perfect example he is the perfect example of the faith of God on the inside of a man in the earth bringing forth God's will in this earth. He walked by faith. He talked by faith. Everything that came out of him was an action of faith. Jesus cursed a tree, and this tree, fig tree, died from the roots. One day he was hungry. He saw a tree in a distance. He went to that tree. It was supposed to be producing fruit at that time. It did not have anything on the tree for him to eat. The Bible says that Jesus answered the tree and he spoke to this tree and he said, no man eats fruit from you from this day forward. He spoke to that tree. They didn't, he didn't have immediate results in a way that he could see it or other people could see it at the time that he spoke it. It wasn't until the next day. And when Jesus came by the next day, Peter noticed the tree and it says that he, he remembered and he re reminded them of what had happened the day before when Jesus spoke to that tree. And it said that that tree was dried up 
from the roots. It was dead from the roots. It was withered away. It was completely dry. It was completely dead. Jesus spoke. He cursed. And the tree died. Well, that's a good example for you and I. We can not only bless with our tongue, but we, there are also times that we need to use our tongue to curse and bring death to things that are not of God. And the Bible says that Jesus answered the tree. Apparently, this tree was uh, providing some type of negative thought. You know, the, the trees don't speak, but the devil, he uses the negative things of this world to speak negative thoughts. And it's his desire that through these negative thoughts that, that he brings into our soul as a result of negative, negative situations in our life that we speak those thoughts forth. And when we speak those thoughts forth, Jesus said that we take the thoughts when we say it. We literally can bring those things into manifestation in our life. And that's not what we want to happen. We want to speak God's word. We want to speak God's thoughts. God's word and his thoughts are the same thing. And when we do that, we can bring forth God's plan, God's purpose, God's will in our life. So we bless with our tongue. We can also curse. And when we speak against, just like Jesus, he spoke to that tree and he said, no man eats on this tree from this day forward. And we can do the same thing. We can speak that those those things that are coming into our life to steal from us, those things that are coming into our life that are negative, that are, that are not the will of God. No, you don't. You cannot do that in our life. Uh, if there's a sickness in, in, that wants to manifest itself in your body, you can speak against those things. You know, I've had those times where symptoms want to come up and you can, you can feel that symptom in your body. And I simply say, no, I refuse. I refuse to allow that symptom to dwell in my body. Just a few days ago, you know, there were some things that were going around here and in Nuremberg and people getting sick. And, and, you know, you're around these people, you're around people all the time that in out in, in the world. And, and you hear about it. I, my son just got home from a ski trip and half the class was sick and all this information was coming. And, and so you hear that kind of stuff. And then the devil says, oh, you know, that's going to get you. you you're, I'm going to bring that on you. And instantly when that thought came, no, you don't. You will not bear that fruit in my body. I resist you. I go against you. And thank God it's good to walk in divine health. And that's the way it works. You curse these things. You go against those things that are contrary to the will of God. In Mark, the 11th chapter, notice in verse 20, it says, And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember, and saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Now remember this verse. It says, Have faith in God. That's what the King James says, but actually the Greek says it this way, have the God kind of faith. I don't know why they didn't translate that properly. I guess that uh, they, you know, they didn't have the, the revelation of, of the fact that God's faith can really be on the inside of man. And that's exactly what this verse is saying. This verse is saying, and, and in the footnotes of many Bibles, it even says that, that, that this should have been translated, have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Well, Paul referred to that in Galatians 2 and verse 20, where he said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live, I live by, it says, the faith of the Son of God. Well, Paul lived by the faith of the Son of God. He lived by the same faith that was on the inside of Jesus. And Jesus had God's faith in him. And uh, remember, we read in 2 Peter 1 and, and verse 1, it says that we have obtained like precious faith. We have God's faith. This is a part of our new creation. This is a part of who we have become in Christ. When you were born again, God put his faith in you. And so Jesus cursed this fig tree be th through 
this faith of God that was on the inside of him, the, the curse was released and it caused that fig tree to die. This faith is on the inside of you. God's faith is there. When God says no, no is no. When God says yes, yes is yes. And, and if God says no and you speak out a no, then it's going to stop. If God says yes and you speak out a yes, it's going to come to pass. Praise God. That's what Jesus is going to teach us here in verse 22. In verse 22 through 25, it says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Wow. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever... Now notice, it doesn't say whosoever apostle, whosoever prophet, whosoever pastor, <laughs> or, you know, a great uh, man of God that you know that, that uh, you say, wow, that person has done great, great things. I'm going to tell you something. That person that has done great, great things started small. Nobody gets there overnight. And, and that's the way God works. God says, as we're faithful over little, he makes us great over much. I mean, think about what God did even through his son, Jesus. He birthed Jesus into a small town, a little town called Bethlehem, a, a place that you wouldn't think that a king would be born. Yet that's what God does. He starts big things in small places. And, and he put his faith in you to do big things through you hallelujah all of us each one of us have god's faith in us for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain now remember jesus has just cursed a tree and it dies and now jesus is standing at the mount of olives and when Jesus stands at the Mount of Olives, and, and he can literally see this on the inside, because you see, he's not only teaching them about faith, but Jesus is also re releasing some prophetic words. Jesus knows the Old Testament, and he knows that there's going to be a day that he's going to come back to the earth as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the Bible says that when he comes, and this is found in Zechariah, the 14th chapter, he's going to come in the Mount of Olives is going to split. This is probably the same mountain that Jesus was at when he was transfigured. The Bible doesn't say that, but I believe that's the way it is according to the evidence of the prophetic word about when Jesus Christ returns. He's going to return. And and uh, at his second coming, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, when he brings his kingdom to the earth, I'm not talking about the time when we leave in the rapture. I'm talking about the end of the tribulation. When Jesus Christ comes back as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Bible says that he's going to speak to this mountain, and this mountain is going to split. It's going to be removed. And that's what Jesus can see here. He's, he's given out a prophetic word, but at the same time, he's teaching them how it's going to happen, how it's going to come to pass. And then he's not just speaking about a mountain. He's speaking about things. And so we could uh, bring this into our own lives in reference to big things that are in front of us that need to move. Maybe you have something big in your life. Maybe you have something impossible in your life. Maybe uh, the doctor has told you there's no chance for you. Maybe you have a financial situation. I just had a testimony recently of, of some of our partners, and, and these our partners were very deep, deep, deep in debt. I mean, it was a large amount of money, and praise God, they have been sowing, and they've been sowing, and they've been believing God with the seed that they have sown, and God has supernaturally worked in their life, and the debt is almost completely paid and supernaturally. <laughs> That's God, supernaturally. And you know what? Praise God, not only has God taken them forward to where all of that is is taken care of, but a God also take them forward to where they will prosper, prosper, prosper. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful, wonderful praise report. But for them, it was a humongous mountain. It was a big, big mountain. But they sowed in faith. They believed God in faith. They spoke the word of God in faith. And, and that mountain has been removed. Wow. Isn't that great? For verily I say unto you, now look at this. 
that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father, which also is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Well, Jesus is talking here about the heart. And the heart here in this verse is a reference to your soul. How do you know that? Because when you were born again, you became a complete, brand new creation. In your spirit, you're lacking nothing. This is exactly what the Bible says. The Bible teaches us that we are complete in Christ. We've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's Ephesians 1 and verse 3. And then uh, Peter writes that so we've been given all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And, and what we've been given that pertains to life and godliness is in the divine nature. Peter writes about this in his own book. We have God's life, his Zoe life in us, his nature in us. Well, part of his nature is his own faith. Romans twelve four is another verse that says that we have all been given the measure of faith. We have God's faith in us. That's a part of our spirit. It's one of the fruits of the spirit that the Bible mentions. And so this faith is in us. It's in our spirit. You never have a faith problem in your spirit. God never has a problem believing his own word. <laughs> and that ability is there. It's in you to believe the word. And so what does it say? It says here in verse 23. Now remember, Jesus is saying, have the God kind of faith. So he is preparing them at that time for the change that will come into them in the new creation, in the time that they step out of the Old Testament way of living and into the New Testament way of living. How does that happen? It happens by being born again. If you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God has come to live on the inside of you. Now look at this. So it says, for verily or truly I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, unto you what? Unto you that has the faith of God in them. Unto you, I say unto you. It's, that's, that's the whosoever there. You got to be born again. You got to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And when that happens, God comes to live in you. If you've not received Jesus, you, um, all you have to do is pray and say, Jesus, I believe in you as my Savior. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe that you became sin with my sin. I believe you went to hell and paid the price for my sin. I believe that you're resurrected from hell. And I believe in you as my Lord and my Savior. And if you do that, right there, that's simple. God comes to live in you, and you become a brand new person, and then God's faith is there to where you can operate the same way that he operates. Man was created in God's likeness and God's image to do it the same way that he does it, and he puts his faith in us to do it. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, Unto this mountain. So there's no excuse. You fit in that category right now if you're unsaved. Praise God. If you were unsaved. Now you're saved. Thank you, Jesus. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea. But notice, and shall not doubt in his heart. Well, if you're a new creation in Christ, a brand new person, and God has come to live on the inside of you, you don't have any doubt there in your spirit. This word heart has to do with your soul. And that's why the Bible teaches us that we need to get our souls renewed with the word. Well, I see that that's all the time we have for this message today. Listen again tomorrow as we continue on with this series, The Faith Life. This is Mark Irvin. Faith, hope, and love. Greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love. Well, this is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad you got to be with us today. If you've never prayed and received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. It's the most important thing you'll do in your life. This is the way that you can go to heaven. This is the way God becomes your Father. 
So just pray this prayer with me right now if you've never received Jesus as your Savior. Jesus, right now, I believe in you. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you paid the price for my sin. Jesus, you resurrected. Jesus, you are my Lord. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, God just became your father. And you became a son or a daughter. Write us and let us know about it. You can do that on the website. Listen again as we bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. This is Mark Irvin. Faith, hope, and love Greatest of these is love Faith, hope, and love The greatest of these is love Hello, this is Mark Irvin bringing you a message of faith, hope, and love each Monday through Friday through this internet broadcast. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hope is the anchor of your soul. And here's the greatest one of the three. You have a Father God who really loves you and cares for you. Yes, that's right. You were created to be loved by God. So listen each Monday through Friday. Tell your friends. Get your Bible. Relax and enjoy the broadcast. This is Mark Irvin. Well, praise the Lord. It's another day for another message of faith, hope, and love. We're teaching right now a series called The Faith Life. Before we get into the message, let's go before our Father in prayer. Father, I just thank in Jesus' name for, again, an opportunity that we have to be together in this way, Father. I just thank you for your word. I thank you for changing lives through your word. I thank you for giving revelation from your word, Father. I thank you for your living word that goes into our hearts and changes our lives, changes us in our soul, changes everything in this outside life to bring our outside life into your perfect way, your perfect plan. Father, that place where your perfect will comes to pass, your word, your will, in our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You can open your Bible to Mark the 11th chapter mark the 11th chapter we're teaching about how this faith works how it functions how it comes paul said to the church at corinth he said for we walk by faith and not by sight we walk by faith and not by sight what's the difference why did paul say that well that's the way the world functions the world functions by sight You know, you can see that with joy. If things are going good in a person's life, they're happy, they sing, they laugh. They go to football games, they're excited. If their team is losing, they're depressed. If things are going, they're going through difficult times, they're depressed. But you know, for you and I, we always have victory. Victory's always on the inside. We always have joy. Joy is always on the inside. We always have love. Love is always on the inside. That is who we are. That's our recreated human spirit. God lives there. The Holy Spirit lives there. We are love that resists the hatred and unforgiveness that's in this world. The way that the world lives is not the way we live. We're joy that resists depression. We are healing that resists sickness. We are righteous that resists sin. That's who we are. And so the faith is the life of living, not from the outside and all the circumstances, but living from the inside out. We bring all of this good life that God has placed within us through the new birth, through coming to live in us, We bring that from the inside out. We don't walk by 
only what we see with our eyes and we taste with our mouth and we touch with our hands and we see with our eyes and we hear with our ears. No, we walk from the inside. We walk by faith. We walk by the Spirit. We walk by God's Word. We walk by what God has said. <clears throat> and so God is in us. Paul said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, look here in Mark, the 11th chapter, and Jesus is a perfect example of a man living in this world, yet living from the inside. He was in the world, but not of the world. And that's you and I. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. We're of God. God lives in us. His faith is is in us to be activated and to bring forth all these good things that are in the Zoe life, the salvation package. In Mark 11, in verse 22, and we spent quite a bit of time on this. Jesus has just spoke to a tree, cursed the tree. We saw that he didn't have results that could be seen right after he spoke to the tree. It wasn't until the next day. The next day they were walking by this tree that they had cursed, and Jesus teaches the disciples and teaches us a lesson about faith. It says here in verse 22, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. We saw that in the footnote of many Bibles, that's what it says, Have the God kind of faith. The Greek says that, have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, well, who is the whosoever? It's the whosoever that has the God kind of faith. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Right here is the key. You know, let's think about this verse right here in verse 23. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall do what? He shall believe that those things that he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Well, that sounds like Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10. Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10 is the salvation of Scripture. We taught on this in the beginning of this series. It says in Romans 10, and it says, When we, we believe in our heart the Lord Jesus and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, we shall be saved. How did we get born again? We believed. We believed in Jesus as our Savior. We believed the message that someone ministered unto us. Maybe you read a track and, and you uh, prayed the salvation prayer with that track that you read. Maybe you went to a service and at the end of the service, the preacher gave you an opportunity to come forward and to pray a prayer and receive the new birth. Maybe somebody shared the gospel with you in your neighborhood or in the shopping center. I don't know. You know, I don't know how you got saved. We all got saved different ways. God brought different people into our lives and they shared the message with us. We heard the word of God. We believed the message that was preached to us, that was shared with us. And then what did we do? We confessed. We prayed. We confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And at that time, we were saved. Well, we found out in previous teaching that the word saved in Romans uh, 10 and verses 9 and 10, that word saved there is the word sozo, and it's talking about the all-inclusive package. It's talking about the new birth. It's talking about health. It's talking about safety. It's talking about deliverance, talking about perseverance. It's, it's the entire package of God that's imparted into you when you're born again. Faith would be in that package. Love would be in that package. Joy would be in that package. Everything that you received is included in that word saved. Wow. Isn't that powerful? So how did that happen? You know, you didn't just get born again to go to heaven. You didn't just get born again and become a child of God. But becoming a child of God, you receive that entire inheritance, that promise that was 
given unto Abraham, that through Abraham all of the nations of the earth would be blessed, that everlasting life, that everlasting covenant. That's what you have. That's who you have become. You have become the inheritance. <laughs> you have become all of these things that are in the package. And how did that happen? Well, you believed in your heart. And see, this is the point. You don't want to just believe to become a child of God. But you want to believe, you know, this is this is what's happening. This is getting activated on the inside of you. You make the decision. Wow, I got this in the package. And, and you know, whether whether it manifests in a person's life or not doesn't mean that it's not in the package. I remember one time, you know, I was in and I've heard Brother Hagen share this and I've had literally the same thing happen in my life before. But, uh, you know, one time. I was at a gas station and I couldn't uh, put gas into my car because I didn't have any of my bank cards at that time. And and I looked into my billfold. When I looked in my billfold, there wasn't any money there. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, I did have enough money to get or gas to get home. But a couple of weeks later, I was looking around in my billfold. And I noticed, whoa, there was a $20 bill there. <laughs> and this $20 bill was in a hidden place in my billfold. It was behind something in my billfold. And, uh, you know, if, if I had known when I was at the gas station that I had that $20 bill in my billfold, I could have went ahead and, and put quite a bit of gas in my car at that time without any problem of, uh, to, to be able to get home. And I, I did get home. Like I said, I just had barely enough to get home at that time. But it would have been nice to not have to resist those thoughts. Are you going to make it home or not? And of course, this was many years ago. You can't fill your tank up with $20 worth of gas today. And uh, But you see, I had the money there. It was in my billfold. I just didn't know it was there. And that's why it's so important that you get to know the word. And that's why not only are we saved by faith, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not only do we hear the word of God to be saved or to receive the new birth to where we know we're going to heaven and we know that we become a child of God and God's become our father. But we hear God's word. And as we hear God's word after we receive this new birth, God's word comes and it shows us all the things that are in the package. And then as you see that, you say, wow, praise God. And that activates that belief on the inside of you to where all these other things that are in this package can manifest in your life. And this is how the doubt is removed. Look at this in verse 23. It says, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, Jesus here, you know, he knows that this is going to happen through him someday. There's going to be a day that he literally is going to speak to the mountain that he's referring to. This is the Mount of Olives. And when Jesus comes at his second coming, his second advent, that's not the same as a rapture. We're going to come back with him. And when we come back with him, he's going to speak to that mountain and that mountain is going to be split. It's going to be cast into the sea. He's going to speak to it and it's going to happen. And so Jesus knows that this mountain is going to be removed someday. This is a prophetic verse and he's speaking from the inside out. But not only is it a prophetic verse, he's also teaching us about how this works. He spoke to the tree and the tree died. He's going to speak to the mountain. The mountain is going to move. Look at this. It says, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Heart here has to do with your soul. You have no doubt in your spirit. There's absolutely no doubt there. God lives there. His nature's there. His faith is there. You never have a problem in your spirit. You are complete in Christ. But you see, you're three parts. The Bible teaches us that we are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. In our spirit, we're complete. We're perfect. We're not getting any more faith there. We're not getting any more love there. We're not getting any more joy. It's all there. It's all in the package. But the Bible teaches us that we are saved in our soul with God's word. We are to get our mind renewed 
with the Word of God. We're to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. These are different verses in God's Word. And so what does that mean? That means that what is in spirit needs to get into our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. Well, if you would have doubt in your heart, where would that be? That couldn't be in your spirit. Because God's faith is there. We already saw that. So what's the problem? The problem would be doubt in the soul. How do you get rid of the doubt in the soul? The same way you got saved. You hear the word. You get your mind renewed with the word. God's word and God's thoughts are the same thing. So as you hear God's word, what's going to happen? You hear it. You believe it. Wow, it activates the faith in you in the spirit. And what happens? That faith comes up as a force. Literally, it's a force, just like love is a force, just like joy is a force. You can knock depression right out of your soul as you get revelation on the joy of God, as you get your mind renewed with what the Word of God has to say about joy, about thanksgiving. It's the same way with um, what God's Word has to say about love. If there's unforgiveness there, you look at the Word of God and you, you, you find out what God's Word has to say about love and what happened. It activates love and it'll knock the hurt out of your soul. You can get healed in your soul. You don't have to have these bad feelings in your soul because of things that have happened in your life. This is the way it works. Faith comes. I cannot stress this enough. You know, we as Christians need to be word seekers, get filled with the word. God confirms his word with signs following. Well, signs, wonders, miracles. Yeah, that's one thing. But the other thing is the testimony of your life. God will confirm his word. You get loaded with his word about joy and you're going to be the happiest person in the world. You you get loaded with God's word about love and you're going to be the most forgiving, caring, outflowing of love person uh, that's in this world. Because God is is in you and he wants to manifest himself through you he needs his word to do that god's word is what releases the faith faith is the transporter that carries all these things from the inside of you as spirit into your soul knocks all that stuff out of your soul your emotions change your thoughts change the word says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he no more do you have doubt you have faith faith is there up in your soul you believe these things. I don't have a problem believing in the message of healing. I know it's God's will to be healed, and I know it's absolutely God's will to heal through me. There was a time in my life, you mean God could do something like this? And uh, and I, you know, and and there was questions, there was there was doubt there. But praise God, I got the word of God about healing, and then I started praying for the sick, and sick people started getting healed, and it's been going on from that point on it's the same way with finances all these different things it's so important we know god's word wow so what does it say and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things that he says shall come to pass then as you believe that the things you say come to pass you'll have whatsoever you say if you believe and you speak well that's all the time we have today listen again as we continue on with this message the faith life this is mark urban Faith, hope, and love Greatest of these is love Faith, hope, and love Well, this is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad you got to be with us today. If you've never prayed and received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. It's the most important thing you'll do in your life. This is the way that you can go to heaven. This is the way God becomes your Father. So just pray this prayer with me right now if you've never received Jesus as your Savior. Jesus, right now, I believe in you. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you paid the price for my sin. Jesus, you resurrected. Jesus, you are my Lord. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, God just became your father and you became a son or a daughter. Write us and let us know about it. You can do that on the website. Listen again as we bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. This is Mark Irvin. Faith. 
faith, hope, and love. Greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Hello, this is Mark Irvin bringing you a message of faith, hope, and love each Monday through Friday through this internet broadcast. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hope is the anchor of your soul. And here's the greatest one of the three. You have a Father God who really loves you and cares for you. Yes, that's right. You were created to be loved by God. So listen each Monday through Friday. Tell your friends. Get your Bible. Relax and enjoy the broadcast. This is Mark Irvin. Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. So glad to be with you again today for another message of faith, hope, and love. And currently we are teaching a series on the faith life. The faith life. What powerful, powerful teaching that we have already had. This is the, I think, the 12th message right now of this series that we're doing. And I know that many lives are being helped and changed and just appreciate all the reports that we are getting from those of you that are watching this series and those of you that uh, this teaching is helping you. Of course, we do these recordings on at different places and different locations. I move around, travel around. Today, I'm in a little bit different location. And so we get some interesting backgrounds sometimes. Some of you had a little humor on our background yesterday. And uh, anyway, thank God, listen to the message and allow God to speak directly to your heart. Hallelujah. Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would speak through me into the hearts of each and every person that watches, listens to this message. And Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit who is on the inside of me, who teaches through me, who gives revelation. And Father, you know exactly what needs to be said today. And Father, you through your Holy Spirit are in me and you will speak directly through me, your word, the word that you've given me into their hearts and their lives will change as your word comes forth. And I thank and praise you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. You can open your Bible to Mark, the 11th chapter. We're going to continue where we left off in our message yesterday. This is a foundational teaching that Jesus gives on Faith. This is, you know, we, we said that there are many different scriptures uh, in God's word pertaining to different themes. You know, there's not a lot of themes in the Bible, but you see these themes over and over and over. And with all of the themes like love and like righteousness and healing and and now we're teaching on faith, there are those foundational scriptures, center scriptures that all the other ones are tied into. And here we have the foundational uh, uh, scriptures that give us the reference to the place where Jesus taught you and I about how this God faith in us operates. Jesus was preparing the disciples. He had spoken to a fig tree. And yesterday I had uh, a man that uh, wrote some notes in on the message that we ministered yesterday about that fig tree. And there's a lot of details in those, those notes. And I appreciate that. In fact, I'm going to cut and copy and paste those into my the place where I keep my commentary things for future reference. But uh, it, it's foundation. And, and when Jesus came to that tree, he looked from a distance. It looked like that there was supposed to be fruit on that tree at that time. And uh, there wasn't any fruit on that tree. And then the Bible says that Jesus answered the tree. Well, trees don't talk. But because of that situation, there were negative thoughts that, uh, that were coming to him. And when those negative thoughts came to him, he spoke. He spoke against he and and you can you can curse things. Jesus literally cursed that tree with his word. And it was through faith in his words that he spoke to curse that tree that that caused that tree to dry up. 
It dried up, the Bible says, from the roots. Now, they didn't see the results immediately when he spoke it, but from the time that he spoke it until the next day, the uh, curse worked in that tree, and it caused that tree literally to die. The next day that they came by that tree, it was completely dead to the roots. And, you know, that's what we do. That's what we do when we, uh, when, when sickness tries to stay in a person's body, we, we speak to that sickness and say to that sickness, you cannot produce fruit in this body anymore. You're dead in Jesus name. We curse it in Jesus name. We curse the cancer. We curse the virus. We curse those bad bacteria. We curse those thoughts that come and say that, uh, the financial need is, is not going to be taken care of. The bill's not going to be paid. The situation's not going to work out. Uh, and things are not going to change at your working place. On and on. You know, th this is the, we, we live in a world that Satan is the God of, but we're not a part of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of it. We have a completely different system of living on the inside of us than the system of this world. And this system that is on the inside of us has a law, and that law is the law of love, and it works by faith. And here's the awesome thing. God put his faith in us. Jesus is the perfect example of a son of God walking in this earth by this God kind of faith in him. And that's what he's saying. He's saying here in Mark, the 11th chapter, have the God kind of faith. And, and we saw that in the Greek, it should have been translated that way. And some of you in the footnotes of your Bible, uh, have it translated that way where Jesus said, have faith in God, or it could have been translated, have the God kind of faith. And we saw in previous teaching where the Bible tells us that we do have God's faith in us. It's in us. Uh, Paul wrote in Romans 12 and verse 4 that we have been given the measure of faith. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1, it says to those that have obtained like precious faith, we have God's faith in us. And then in Romans 10, 17, the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, for the unbeliever, faith comes from the outside in. That's somebody that hasn't received Christ. It's not born again. We come along, we preach the gospel, they hear the message, and they believe on that message. Faith comes through what we give, and they are saved. They are born again. After we're born again, God's faith is in us. And then as we hear the word, this faith that's in us is activated. Oh, I like that. It's activated. It begins to work. And what happens? Then the process of renewing in your soul has started. You see, after you are saved, your spirit is perfect, but you still got all these different doubts about these different things in your soul. And so what happens? As you hear the word and hear the word and hear the word, God's word comes, it activates that faith and it knocks that doubt out of your soul. It'll, it'll knock the doubt out of your soul pertaining to your finances and, and faith begins to grow in the financial realm. And you know, wow, as I, as I sow my seed, I'm blessed just like a farmer to go out and plant my seed and God will cause this seed to multiply and increase and my finances will increase. And the more I have, the more I can do for God. It's the same with love. You know, people are all full of hurt and bitterness and these kind of things. They got, get born again. God's love comes on the inside of them. And then God's love through that faith begins to work in their soul. And those feelings of hurt are released. They're gone. They're removed. And they begin to love like they've never been able to love before. And, and, you know, this is, this is what makes us free. Jesus said that we would know the truth and the truth would make us free. Now let's look at this in Mark 11 and verse 22. It says, Jesus answering saith unto them, Jesus answering saith unto them, have the faith of God. Now, remember, these are Old Testament believers. They believe in Jesus. These are Old Testament believers. The disciples 
have not been born again at this time. They're still under the old covenant. Jesus' entire ministry was under the old covenant. He was the only one that was alive with the Spirit of God on the inside of him during this time in the earth. And he is teaching them, preparing them for this new covenant that would come. That's what we're living in right now. And he says, for uh, have the God kind of faith for verily I say unto you that whosoever. Well, who is the whosoever? It's whosoever that has the God kind of faith. That's me. That's you. We've been born again. God's faith is in us. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. I mean, this is our unlimited ability. I mean, if, if, <laughs> if, you know, if it really was the will of God for you to go out there and to speak to a mountain, you would know it. Physical mountain. You have that ability with this faith in you. Now, this is not just talking about a mountain. And of course, Jesus, he knows that this is going to happen because this is what's going to happen through Jesus when he comes back to the earth to bring his kingdom upon the earth. That's at the end of the tribulation. He's going to speak to the mountain and the mountain is going to be removed. It's the Mount of Olives. But he says that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things. So see, he's not just talking about the mountain here. He's saying those things things so you could say whosoever shall say unto this cancer maybe that's a big mountain in a person's life the doctor says there's no chance you know it's a powerful testimony of of a, a woman that uh, was the wife of a, of a pastor in in america and her and and she spoke she had cancer her name is Dodie osteen and i my whole life was changed at lakewood church when i was a teenager and and she spoke the doctor said, you told John, Pastor John, your wife will be dead in six weeks and no chance for her to live. And the family knew it and all these things. And she spoke to the mountain and the mountain moved. And praise God, she's alive today and kicking <laughs> many, many years later. Wonderful, wonderful testimony. So what's the mountain? The mountain could represent a big thing in a person's thinking an impossible situation in a person's thinking. I mean, if you as a human being stood in front of a mountain, you looked at that mountain and God said, hey, you can speak to that mountain and that mountain will move. You're in your head. You say, whoa, that's that's impossible. Well, it's these things that that are impossible to your physical senses to be changed. You know, the other day I was uh, riding on a train with someone and witnessing, sharing the gospel with them and talking to them about what we believe and being born again and, and then about the crusades that we've had and just coming back from the Philippines and the people that were healed there and coming back from Malaysia and the people that were healed there and, and the person says, wow, that's, you know, that, that's impossible. That's impossible to believe. But they said, if you say so, <laughs> that's what they said. Now, why did somebody say something like that? You know, and this man was, was very well educated and, but see, here's the thing. This man has been educated with all this sense knowledge that comes through the universities and schools and things like that. And, and he's, he's totally been educated in his soul. And, and a lot of these, the, the foundation of this education does not support the, the uh, scriptural principles of the Word of God. It's total education contrary to God's Word. I'm not saying it's wrong to get an education, but please keep your education, number one, God-based. You understand what I'm saying? Well, um, how do you get to that point where you get that stuff knocked out of your soul? The Word of God, the living Word of God. And see, this is a thing. You know, we as Christians, we have a whole different foundation. I mean, our, the whole foundation of what be, we believe, uh, God spoke and the world was created. It came out of the realm of the unseen into the realm of the seen. The virgin birth of Mary. Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. It was the word of God that came into her. All that Old Testament word that was spoken in the Old Testament came into her. And she conceived and then later on gave birth to um our Lord Jesus Christ. We see many examples. And see, this is the reason even in the Old Testament where man was not born again, they had to do things over and over and over. It was to regularly remind them in their senses of the 
promises of God, that God said, God said, and then they did certain things to remind themselves regularly, God said, God said. And then eventually, uh, all the manifestation of what God said about the coming of Jesus came to pass. Praise God. And not only did Jesus come to the earth as a child and live in the earth as a son of God, but Jesus was crucified. He died. He paid our price for sin. He resurrected. And thank God we have this eternal life. We have this new life on the inside of us. That was a big mountain. That was a big mountain, even where the promise began with Adam and Eve. That was a big mountain through the Old Testament. Even the with Abraham, you know, God appeared to Abram and said, you're going to have a baby and you and Sarah are going to get together. And there was no way physically for them to have a baby. That was a big mountain for them. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm going to get into that whole teaching from Romans, the fourth chapter, some great, great teaching. But it says here, and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have he who? He that has the God kind of faith. Now remember, Jesus has spoke to this tree, and the, and the manifestation of what he said came to pass. It didn't happen exactly on that day. It wasn't until the next day that they saw the results. But from the time that he spoke that word, until the next day, things were working by this faith to cause that tree to die. And that's so important. Now, it says, and shall not doubt in his heart. Doubt is never an issue of your spirit. It's always an issue of the soul. And as you hear the word of God and hear the word of God, this is what drives the doubt out of your soul. So what happened? You believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, and these things come to pass. Amen. Now notice here, it's so, so we have faith released through our words. I want you to see something else. Go with me to James, the first chapter, so we speak the word. Not only do we speak the word, but notice what James says in the first chapter. It talks about faith. In verse 14, it says, For what doth it profit? This is James 1.14. I'm sorry, James 2.14. Got the wrong verse. James 2.14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needed to the body, what doth it profit? Now notice verse 17. Even so faith, if it, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And notice here, and I will show thee, my faith by my works. So not only does faith say something and it come to pass through what is said, but there's also action, action. And many times, you know, when I pray for people, not only do I pray for them and speak the word of God and go against the sickness, the pain that's in their body, but at the same time, tell them, hey, do something you couldn't do. Act some way you couldn't act. Put action to it. And many times right then when they put the action, all the symptoms are gone. Well, praise God. Action. I am thinking of a testimony recently when I was in Malaysia. We taught how to uh, heal the sick. And, you know, there was a, a woman there by the name of Jessica. And, man, immediately after one of the services one night, there was somebody that was sick in the church and they were at home late in the bed, completely flat, couldn't get out of bed. And immediately that woman went to that house and laid hands on that one woman that was in bed and she completely got healed. Then just this week sent me a testimony with a picture going out, praying for somebody that was deaf in Malaysia. You got to understand in Malaysia. And immediately as she laid her hands upon that deaf person and stuck her fingers in her ear and commanded that spirit to go and commanded that woman to be healed, that woman was completely healed. So not only do we hear, not only do we speak, but we immediately put action to the word of God that God has given us. Well, I see that our time has come to an end for this teaching. Listen again tomorrow as we bring another message of faith, hope, 
and love. We want to invite you tonight to our service online. You can go on the internet. It's going to be a powerful, powerful uh, service. We're, we're online on the front page of our website. It begins at 7 o'clock German time tonight. This is Wednesday night. We'll see you then. This is Mark Irvin. Faith, hope, and love. Greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love. Well, this is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad you got to be with us today. If you've never prayed and received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. It's the most important thing you'll do in your life. This is the way that you can go to heaven. This is the way God becomes your Father. So just pray this prayer with me right now if you've never received Jesus as your Savior. Jesus, right now, I believe in you. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you paid the price for my sin. Jesus, you resurrected. Jesus, you are my Lord. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, God just became your father. and You became a son or a daughter. Write us and let us know about it. You can do that on the website. Listen again as we bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. This is Mark Irvin. Faith, hope, and love Greatest of these is love Faith, hope, and love The greatest of these is love Hello, this is Mark Irvin bringing you a message of faith, hope, and love each Monday through Friday through this internet broadcast. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hope is the anchor of your soul. And here's the greatest one of the three. You have a Father God who really loves you and cares for you. Yes, that's right. You were created to be loved by God. So listen each Monday through Friday. Tell your friends. Get your Bible. Relax and enjoy the broadcast. This is Mark Irvin. Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you today to bring another message of faith, hope, and love. Before we get into the message, let's go before the Lord and let's ask Him to lead us. Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would speak through me. I pray, Father, that you would speak directly into the hearts of of each and every person that listens to this message. Father, I thank you for your living word. I thank you, Father, for your faith that you put on the inside of us. And through your faith, we live, we walk in Jesus' name. And I thank you for teaching us right now. Amen. You can open your Bible to Mark, the 11th chapter. Mark, the 11th chapter. And we're continuing on with our series of teaching we've been teaching about walking by the god kind of faith or the faith life god's faith is in you the day that you receive jesus as your savior god put himself into you he put his nature into you he put his faith on the inside of you and as you hear the word faith comes as you hear the word, as you hear the word to uh, be born again before you got saved, somebody came along in your life and they, they shared with you the simple saving message of the Lord Jesus Christ. You heard that message and somebody else probably came along or maybe the same person and you continue to hear and finally you made a decision based on what you heard. It brought faith into you and you believed on that time and received Jesus Christ, your Savior, you were born again. Well, after you got born again, God's faith was put into you. That's a part of your spirit. That's a part of the new creation. That's a part of who you have become in Christ. And so for you, now faith comes from the inside out. You hear the word of God from the outside in, goes into you, and it activates God's faith that's within you, and it brings this faith forth so that God's perfect will can come to pass 
in your life. If you haven't been with us, I encourage you to go back and listen to the previous teaching. I think this is the 13th message, 13th message that we've given on this subject, and we've taught a lot already about this faith of God that comes to us before we're saved and gives us the ability to get saved, and then God's faith that is imparted into us that is activated after we are born again. And that activation takes place by hearing God's Word and getting our minds renewed with His Word. Wow. So in Mark the 11th chapter, it says here in verse 22, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have the God kind of faith. We found out that that should have been translated, Have the God kind of faith. And we showed you different verses uh, in the Bible that tell us that we have God's faith in us. Have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, it's whosoever has the God kind of faith, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. Now remember, Jesus has just cursed a fig tree, and the fig tree dried up and withered away. The next day when they walked by, they saw the results of what Jesus had said the day before to that tree. He cursed it, and he cursed that tree with faith. He spoke words of faith, and the tree died. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, well, it's a whosoever has this faith shall say unto this mountain. We have mountain moving faith in us. We have the faith on the inside of us, God's faith that to the senses causes things that are impossible to come to pass. Wow. I mean, this is so powerful, you know. Maybe you have a bad report from the doctor. Maybe it looks like your finances are going under, and there's no, that you're going under financially, and there's no way to get out of this. Maybe, you know, you got a, a situation um, in your job or your neighborhood or with your family, all those these kind of things. Of course, I understand when it comes to working with other people, wills are involved. But you know what? As long as you trust the Lord, if it doesn't come one way, it's going to come another way. God will always be working in the background through this faith to cause his will to come to pass in your life. That is so powerful. Jesus answering, saith unto him, have the God kind of faith for verily or truly, it's a double emphasis, I say unto you, that whosoever, that's you, that has this faith. If you're born again, you have this faith. She'll say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Is there anything in your life that, that, that is standing in your way from God's will coming to pass in your life? Well, that mountain of lack has to be removed. That mountain of sickness has to be removed. That mountain of depression has to be removed. That mountain of those people that are going against you at your job has to be removed. Those, that mountain of lies and accusations that people are bringing against you. The word says that with well-doing we may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Well, we go forth and we do what's right. And how can we go forth and do what's right? Because we do it by faith. Some people think, oh man, crazy. That's crazy. You think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk in love in that situation? Yes, you're going to walk in love in that situation. Because as you walk in love, you are releasing faith, knowing that God is working on this situation to protect you, and he's also working in the hearts of the other people to give them an opportunity to make a change. And if they don't make a change, then God's going to work in your life and in a way where his will comes to pass. Nothing, whatever God has called, whatever God has spoken to you, you use that faith and you believe for that to come to pass, and nothing can stand in the way of keeping that from coming to pass, you're going to finish your course. You're going to run your race. Wow. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say in this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, this is such an important verse. First of all, we have a situation with doubt. And I want you to, to look at uh, another verse of Scripture. Go with me to Acts, the 11th chapter, and let's look at an example 
of healing in connection with faith and in connection with spoken words. Spoken words release faith. You know, when I go and and I have healing crusades, healing evangelistic services, there's two main purposes for those meetings. I was just in the Philippines, so we had two open-air evangelistic service right in the middle of the city. We had a platform. We had a band. We had powerful music. We had teenagers that did some great, great skits. You can see these things on this YouTube channel. Powerful, powerful services. And uh, we had over 350 people give their life to Jesus, and I'm so thankful for that. And I'm, I'm so thankful for the ministries that God is connecting us with to go and, and to help them to bring in the harvest. And praise God, God's doing things here as well in Nuremberg, Germany. And, and God's bringing people in. And we're expecting great, great harvest in this city and in this nation as well. But anyway, if you're going to get people saved, people born again, you got to preach the Word of God out of faith. And so, so when you preach, you, you give the simple saving message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe as, though, as that message goes forth, it's going to hit the hearts of the people. And, and it's going to give them an opportunity to believe, to make a decision. And, and it's the living Word of God. It's not, in, it's not religion. It's not a system of works. It's not condemnation. It's simply preaching the goodness of God, preaching the love of God. Yes, I do tell them that there is a hell to shun. But at the same time, I also tell them that God is a loving God. He's a father, and he wants to have relationship with them as sons and daughters. And so as you release that word, it's causing faith in the whole atmosphere. At the same time, you release the living word of God about healing. And that puts faith out there in the atmosphere. And you have believers there already, and their faith is being activated. And so the whole crusade is filled up with spoken word, hearing word, and activation of faith. And that's why people come forward to receive Jesus Christ our Savior. Something goes into their heart. It's God's word. And they are activated and they become a brand new believer in Jesus Christ. The same time the word of God is released into the atmosphere and the Holy Spirit is able to move and to work with that. You ever notice in Genesis, the first chapter, the Bible says that the spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. We don't know how long the Holy Spirit was moving on the face of the waters. The earth was a total place of chaos at that time, the Bible says that, uh, that, the, that the earth was filled with gross darkness and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. The Holy Spirit wasn't doing anything. He was just there. But once God said, then came light. God said, let there be light. And what happened? God spoke, he saw light on the inside, and he spoke light out from the inside out through faith, and light manifested. The Holy Spirit went to work, and that's the way it is. The Holy Spirit goes to work through our words of faith. The Bible also tells us that angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us, not to us. Angels are not there to minister to us. They are to minister for us. Angels are servants. They go forth and they they cause what we speak to come to pass. They're working on your divine appointments. They're working on situations at your job. They're working on situations with your family. They're working on uh, protecting you. All these things, angels are working. Praise God. And remember, in the Old Testament, it says that they hearken unto the word of God. Well, what is this? God's word is not only uh, a living word that, that works for him. God's word will work for you. And so as you speak God's word, they go forth and they actually do the work. The Holy Spirit begins to manifest his power. He does the work. The angels do the work. I'm telling you, God is there. He's in there, in you. His faith is in you so that his will can come to pass. The Holy Spirit is there, the dynamite power of God, and then the angels are there 
to work on your behalf to bring to pass the manifestation of what you believe according to the word of God and what you speak. Now, in Acts, the 11th chapter, we have an example of what I'm talking about. Notice, Acts, the 11th chapter, and go with me to verse 13. Acts 11 and verse 13. It says, and he showed us. Now, this is Cornelius, and Cornelius is a good man. And, uh, and he, wants, he wants to know God in a personal way. And it says here in verse 13, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house. Now notice, he saw an angel which stood and said unto him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Now the angel, notice, I mean, you would think if an angel would show up in somebody's house, most people would think, well, the angel would have given this man the saving message of the Lord Jesus. But angels, they don't preach the gospel. They don't share the revelations of God's word. Actually, angels learn from us at this time. During the tribulational time, when we're gone, the angels will be a part of the ministers in the earth to give the people that are here in the earth that have been left behind another opportunity during those seven years to receive Jesus as their Savior. But angels right now, they don't have that ability to teach and to preach the word, to share the gospel. But the angel showed up. And, and you know, I, I'm sure that somebody was praying for this man. And, and this man was seeking God, seeking God, and, and wanted to know God in a personal way. And so what happens? The angel showed up in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send man to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall, notice, who shall tell thee words whereby thy and thy house shall be saved. How are these people going to get saved? The only way that anybody can get saved, remember, we saw in Ephesians 2 and verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. For by grace are you saved through faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. And so Cornelius was going to need to hear the gospel, hear the word of God. And as a result of hearing the word of God, faith would come and he would be saved. Wow. Faith comes by hearing. And faith is released through spoken. As, as Peter came to his house and shared, faith was released through the spoken word. He heard faith was released, the living word of God, and faith was released. And then Cornelius and his house made a decision, and they were saved. They were born again. Now go to Acts, the 14th chapter, and let's look at another passage of Scripture. Acts 14, and we'll begin reading. In verse 15, it's, or 1, it says in Acts 14, 1, And it came to pass in Iconium, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. What did they do? They spoke. They spoke something. And as a result of them speaking something, the people believed. Well, I see that that's all the time we have for this message today. We'll continue on in uh, our message on the faith life tomorrow as we uh, uh, continue on with this series that God has given us to minister at this time. This is Mark Irvin. Faith, hope, and love Greatest of these is love Faith, hope, and love well, this is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad you got to be with us today. If you've never prayed and received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. It's the most important thing you'll do in your life. This is the way that you can go to heaven. This is the way God becomes your Father. So just pray this prayer with me right now if you've never received Jesus as your Savior. Jesus, right now, I believe in you. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you paid the price for my sin. Jesus, you resurrected. 
Jesus, you are my Lord. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, God just became your father. And you became a son or a daughter. Write us and let us know about it. You can do that on the website. Listen again as we bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. This is Mark Irvin.